Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining us today. I am here with some of the world's greatest grandchildren. Uh, and we are going to begin to learn a story together. And uh, I thought it might be good to have them with me because this is a story I will be doing this week at an advanced training. It's a story I've never done before. Uh, and so I was curious as I was looking at the story because I have not remembered it yet. I was curious like, hmm, I wonder for younger children because this story is a little bit more complicated. So I thought I might have a conversation with them. So thanks for joining us and uh, stick with us as we learn a brand new story about prayer. guys well today we are here at the uh, Masterson Station Park a little picnic area and uh, so I'm going to to learn a new story today have an advanced training this week and this is a story do you guys remember a guy named Nehemiah yeah mm -hmm. he was uh, so what was he famous for he um, helped rebuild he well he was in charge of rebuilding the Jerusalem Wall. Yeah, he was in charge of helping to rebuild the, the wall around Jerusalem. And before he ever went back to Jerusalem, it's really interesting because uh, he got news. Some guys came back from Jerusalem. And he was like, man, how's, how's the city? How's it going? And they were like, oh, dude, the walls are torn down. I mean, people can raid anytime they want. It's really bad. And he was majorly bummed out. I mean, he was just really sad. Can you show me your sad face? Oh, that's a sad, you got a sad face there? That kind of looks like your normal face there, bud. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, and so that's where our story begins. And so I'm going to read this story. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to close your eyes. And as I read this story, I want you to try to picture the story happening like a movie in your head. All right? Can you can you can I all reach up and turn on your imagination? Click. Every time I hear, every time Mommy reads us a book, I always imagine it in my head. Well, that's what I want you to do today. All right? So, here is our story from God's Word. And Nehemiah is speaking. When I heard these words, I sat down and I cried. I mourned for a number of days, fasting and praying before the God of heavens. I said, Lord, the God of the heavens, the great and awe-inspiring God, who keeps his gracious covenant with those who love him and keep his commands, let your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to hear your servant's prayer that I now pray to you day and night for your servants, the Israelites, I confess the sins we have committed against you. Both I and my father's family have sinned. We have acted badly toward you and have not kept the commands, statutes, and ordinances you gave to your servant Moses. Please remember what you commanded your servant Moses. If you're unfaithful, I'm going to scatter you among the people. But... If you return to me and carefully do what I commanded, even though your exiles were banished to the farthest places, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I chose to have my name live. They're your servants and your people. You redeem them by your great power and strong hand. Please, Lord, let your ear hear the prayer of your servant. And to that of your servants who delight to honor your name. Give your servant success today and grant him compassion in the presence of this man. When I prayed this, I was the king's cup bearer. Okay, that's the story. Now, hmm. kind of it's an interesting story. Interesting story. <laughs> yeah. So, just in your own words, so what did you see happening in that story? What was the first thing he did? 
Well, he sat down and he started crying, so I kind of imagined him just honestly sitting down at one of the chairs at church, like one of those plastic orange chairs we yeah. use for some reason. He sat down on one of those and then he started crying. Okay, he started so. crying. Yeah, and he started, he, and he said he mourned. When you guys hear the word mourned, what does that mean to you? Hurt. Hurt, okay. Like hurt physically? Hurt emotionally. You know. <laughs> hurt emotionally? Okay. Yeah, like he was sad. All right, and he, and he says, uh, he said, I confess my sins. And, and the sins the, of the people. Yeah, the sins of, uh, and, and the sins of my father's family. That's kind of weird, isn't it? That's He's confessing other people's sins for him. Confessing other people's sins. Yeah. I found that interesting as I was going through the story. And then he said, I want you to remember what you commanded your servant Moses. And so that's something I will need to put in my introduction when I do the story. Because Moses, when he was leading the people of Israel out of Egypt and to the promised land, right? Yeah. God made a series of promises or covenants with the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you do these things right, then God's going to bless you. But if you do these things wrong, then this is the judgment that's going to come. But there's if you redemption. change your minds and get it right, then there's redemption. That's a great word, redemption. Girls, when you hear the word redemption, what do you think of when you hear the word redemption? Does that mean anything to you? Do you do you even know what? It, and that's okay if it doesn't. I don't even know what it means. So yeah, I, don't know I think okay. I think of Jesus on the cross. Okay, yeah, Jesus redeemed us. He bought us back. He brought us back to the place that God intended for us to be. And so, for for Moses, what he would be saying is. Uh, that God says there's a way to make yourself right again, even after you've messed up. Uh, and let's see. When God redeemed them, he brought them back. They were slaves, and he purchased them by the miracles that he did, right? Yeah. Uh, do you, how many miracles did he do? Do you girls remember how many miracles God did? to deliver the children out of Egypt? Anybody remember? Mm -mm. No. I need you to sit back just a little bit, babe. A bunch. He did, he did 10 miracles, and then he did all kind of miracles when they were in the desert. It's, we've even talked about some of those in the past, mm -hmm. ways that he's provided water when there wasn't any water. There's a story where Moses took a staff, a rod, big stick, and hit the rock and, and water rock came out of it. Water came out, yeah. So God provided for them. But uh, God provided redemption through that story too. He, he did. still he still gave the people water even though Moses had deliberately disobeyed him. Well, the second story the second water story, Moses deliberately disobeyed him. Yeah. In the first story he hit the rock the way he was supposed to. In the second story, he hit the rock Against and he wasn't God's supposed will. to. Yeah, that's that's good to remember good remembering. So here's the way I'm going to remember this story as I go through it. So uh, he, he starts off, he's just got the news, and so I picture him, maybe not in an orange chair, but I picture him sitting down, and he's, he's, he sat down, and he wept. He mourned for a number of days, and he prayed, and he fasted. So what's fasting? Where you don't eat for, like, Sometimes forty days. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's a, been sometimes a long three. time going without eating. Yeah. yeah, God fasted for forty days. Yeah, Jesus fasted for forty days. You know, uh, but that's not impossible for him. Uncle Bubs and Grammy have both fasted for forty days. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. So, but then he starts. I'm going to look at this because then he starts off praying. Uh, Lord, I'm praying to you, and then he confesses the sin. So what I'll do is I'll go through the story, and I'll kind of break it into almost scenes. Yeah. You know how in the, in, the, in the shows you like to watch, there'll be a scene where they're here, and a scene where they're here, and a scene where they're doing something different? That's the same thing I'm going to do. scene where they're killing the bad guys. Yeah, the scene where they're killing the bad guys, which we don't have that scene in this particular story. Uh, but I'm going to break this up into scenes. So he starts praying, 
And then he starts confessing. And then he reminds God of a promise he made to Moses. How cool is that? Uh, like, hey, Lord, this is, this is what you said to Moses. Why, why might he remind God of a promise he made to Moses? I mean, Moses has been gone for a long time at this point. Well, um, sometimes it almost seems like um, God kind of forgets. But, I mean, he doesn't ever right. forget. He doesn't but, ever forget. Right. Like, but it, it seems like the people think he's forgetting. Mm. So Good way to put they, it. they just kind of remind him of his promise. Hey, God, you made this promise to, um, to Moses a little while back. You know, um, you'll deliver us to the to the promised land and uh, well see we're not quite in the promised land right now we're you know yeah, we're yeah. in a little bit of a pickle yeah and, and here what he's doing is he's reminding God that okay yeah this is what you said so this is the reason I'm asking for this uh, and, and obviously God knows those things right but it's like when we quote scripture in our prayer uh, it, it, you know Grammy you you hear Grammy Pammy pray a lot, right? Yeah. And she almost always has a lot of Bible verses when she prays, right? And sometimes she cries. Yeah, she does, yeah. <laughs> she she cries almost like Nehemiah does. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then uh, he said, okay, give me success today. What he's getting ready to do is he's getting ready to go to the king and say, mm -hmm. I would like to go back to Jerusalem to try to do something. So as he's praying, he is praying that God would prepare the king's heart. Because the story after this, if you went to the king and you were sad, you know what could happen? You could be killed. So. But you know, you almost, I feel like in the Bible, you almost never see kings be that vicious. Like in, in like the stories where kings are explicitly like mm. story by story, yeah, yeah. you know, like, Manasseh, I mean, he was evil, but... Um, yeah, he, he, he killed his own children, so... <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was. Kind of a bad guy. Yeah, he was yeah. a nice guy. Well, guys, so, you know, just... What, what I would do is break this into scenes, and then I'm going to go over it again, and, and then I will turn that paper over and try to repeat as much as I can remember. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll do that four or five times until I have the story down a little bit. And then I'm going to start going through the story section by section. And I'm going to ask some of the questions that we ask in uh, simply the story that Elijah has learned. You know, I'm going to look at the different characters and, and what they're saying and what they're doing and uh, you know what did they did they have other choices? Could they have rephrased it? And, and, and gradually what's going to happen is as I do that, I'm going to remember the story. It might take me a little bit. So, And I'm going to do this story on Tuesday probably or Wednesday at a training I'm doing online. Uh, is it at the Ark? No, this one's not going to be at the Ark. Oh. I'll be at the Ark later in the fall. But you'll be at China. Uh, but not this week. Oh. This week I'm going to be, I'll be here. So, oh. but, uh, so thank you guys for helping me just go through the story and think through how I'm going to do it and looking at words. Were there any other words that I said as I read that story that kind of, do you remember anything that was like, I don't really understand that. I don't get that. Was there anything that stood out to you? I think it's interesting. God who keeps his gracious covenant. Yeah, the you know, covenant. And then, yeah. and then he goes on to say, hey, you made this. You made this promise to Moses. So, since basically he's saying it again, kind of, since you're the God who keeps your gracious covenants, well then, how about you answer our prayers here? You know. Good. Yeah, reminding God that He is a covenant keeper. Do you guys know what a covenant is? Um, like a promise. Yeah, it's like a really serious promise. And there's also like, another yeah. covenant, like so. the covenant that the. In Abraham's day, they I forgot what it's called. The, yeah, there's a yeah. blood covenant, there's a salt covenant, there's all kind of covenants in the Bible. And the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. If God makes a covenant, what do you think the odds are that he would keep it? A ton. About 
thousand. A quadrillion percent. and a quadrillion. <laughs> yeah. He'll About he never thousand. breaks his promises. He never breaks his promises. Because That's he right. never sins. And he, he always keeps them too, even if it doesn't seem like he's gonna keep them right at the moment. Like oftentimes we'll think, you know, by by him saying, I'm gonna give you this promise, we think, Okay, when's when's it gonna happen? Yep. Wait for it. Yep. Wait for yeah. it. Sometimes wait for it. Like when Abraham and Sarah what? wanted to have a child. He said, wait mm. two more years. Yeah. yeah. And they did, and then they had a child. So sometimes God keeps his promises for a long time and short time. Yeah, he fulfills them. He doesn't always fulfill them the way we think he's going to, does he? Well, guys, uh, this story is in Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Uh, and... Like I said, I'll be doing this story later on in the week, and we'll probably post it on Wednesday. Uh, so I invite you to, uh, to check in and see if I learned the story. Because right now, honestly, I don't know the story. Yeah. And that's okay. It, it takes a while. I appreciate my grandbabies helping me today uh, to uh, look at this and, and start the journey of learning it. Uh, if uh, you know, if you have comments or suggestions, or if there's questions that came up, there are some words uh, you're like, mm, I'm not sure how I would how I would remember that. Uh, just put it in the comment section. And let me know. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, as always, we'd love to have you do so. So, till the next time, hey guys, I want you to say, till the next time, keep telling those Bible stories. Okay. Till the next, next time, time keep, keep telling, telling those Bible, Bible stories. stories. Bye. Bye.